Hey, Vlad here, devinsideview.com. Welcome to another video. Today we're playing with Corsair, a pure Scala artifact fetcher. They became a full-blown package manager and a one-stop shop for all of your Scala environment setup needs. Let's get right to it. Corsair was conceived in the summer of 2015, and even though it didn't start like this, it is arguably most known as an SBT plugin which replaces the built-in Ivy style resolver and artifact fetcher. In fact, I've been meaning to make this video a while ago, but then SBT 1.3 came out and it had Corsair built in, and so I stopped looking into it. Recently the stable version of Corsair 2 came out, and so I decided that it was a good time to check it out, and boy was I pleasantly surprised. These days Corsair, or to be more specific, the the Corsair CLI is probably the best way to manage your Scala environment. It can fetch artifacts for you from the known places like Maven, Bintray, and many others. It can list dependencies of your artifacts. It can install apps, and it can even install the JVM. It can launch apps without installing them. And recently, it also received a command called setup, which sets up your entire environment with literally one command. In fact, I will release a very short video in parallel to this one that will showcase just this one setup command. And so if you're not using Corsair, you're definitely missing out. So let's start taking it apart, shall we? Now, first and foremost, Corsair means courier in French. Why French? Well, because the developer is French. And so the correct pronunciation would be Corsier. But I don't speak French, so I guess the joke is on me. The name makes sense if you think about it. It's a courier, so it delivers your artifacts for you. Corsair can be used as a library, and in fact, it is used as a dependency fetching library by most, if not all, Scala build tools these days, and it is even used by other tools like Ammonite and Metals. However, today we're going to concentrate solely on its command line interface. As in most of my videos, I'm on Windows, and I used to use Oracle VirtualBox for my VMs, but these days I switched to WSL2, as you have seen probably in my previous two videos. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna open the terminal I'm gonna show you which um, instances or distributions I have like this is the one that I usually use for recording that I have inside you and this is the workspace that I usually use to prepare all of my videos so what we're gonna do today is we're going to create an entirely new distribution or instance as I'm used to call it so I'm gonna open Microsoft Store I'm gonna search for WSL and I'm going to click on Ubuntu 20.04 I'm going to click on this button which says install which says launch but it actually should say install because I don't actually have this Ubuntu um, machine installed and so it says that it will take a few minutes, uh, but it should actually take just a couple of seconds and it should be done now. There we go. All right. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that. I'm going to close this because this is way too tiny. I'm going to open my Windows terminal like this. I'm going to type in WSL hyphen L hyphen B and you're going to see that we have this machine now. So I can do that was WSL hyphen D Ubuntu. 20.04 and there we go we're inside so i'm going to go to my home folder i'm going to press ctrl l and you know just for good measure because this is brand new vm so i'm just going to at least update it you know we don't really need to do this but you know whatever so let's do this and while it does this i'm going to go to my other virtual desktop where i already have my chrome instance prepared i'm going to open it i'm going to show you the installation page for the cli on the get course here io page the link is going to be down in the description all right, now these days you can download a native launcher, like Corsair itself is written as in SPT, but usually you don't need uh, anything else except for the native launcher. So the installation for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, uh, they all look the same. You basically download this native image, like in this particular case, we're gonna download Corsair CLI Linux. Uh, for Mac, you can download this one, or you can go with Homebrew, and for uh, Windows, you can also download it uh, like this. Now the installation process itself is very simple. You just download this tiny thing, you make it executable, and you run it. And uh, you can actually like, so this is like a sort of like a temporary launcher. You can actually use this launcher to install Corsair itself. And that's why it's gonna be very easy in the future to update it because you can update Corsair via Corsair. So after the initial installation process, we will actually be able to, uh, to uh, remove this, um, this uh, CS binary. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here. It should probably finish, ah, perfect timing. So it's finishing uh, right now. And I've been doing this so many times that I actually even remember the URL. So all we need to do is I'm going to show you that I don't have anything here. This is a, a brand new VM. So I'm going to do curl and I'm going to go to HTTPS colon slash slash git.io. Now git.io is actually a, uh, a URL shortener. And so it will actually redirect to the proper URL. And because of this, we need to tell curl to follow redirects. Okay. Now the file is called Corsair CLI. 
core CR, CLI, CLI Linux, like this. And if we specify the capital O, then it will just download the file and it will call it Corsair CLI Linux. If we use the small O, then we will be able to actually rename the file and I'm gonna call it CS. Now the, the native image is around like 50 megs and I have a very, um, very fast connection. So if we do if we do this, we're gonna see that it's 56 uh, max. Okay, so all we need to do is we need to make it executable. See yes, and now it is executable. Okay, and because it's not on the path, we need to do we need to do dot slash CS, and now we can do many commands. For example, the first one that we're gonna do is we're gonna simply install CS. Okay, so we're using Corsair to actually install uh, Corsair. Okay, it should take just a couple of seconds, and once it finishes, it will tell us that the uh, the path where it installs all the tools, which is slightly different on Linux and, and on Mac and on Windows, that it is not on the path. So the first thing that we need to do is well, actually, right now we can also remove this um this thing that we downloaded there okay so it's not any, not, not there anymore okay it says that we need to exp to add this to the path so i'm just going to copy this i'm going to open my vim profile i'm going to go to the bottom of the file i'm going to open a new line i'm going to paste it in i'm going to go back to the normal mode and now we need to go out, we need to go back in. And now if I say which CS, it should be able to find it because it's now over there, right? So all the tools that Corsair will install, they will be installed into a local share Corsair bin. The uh, actual uh, location will be slightly different if you're on a Mac or if you're on, uh, on Windows, but uh, basically you need to put this folder in there, okay? So now, uh, let me actually go back to my home folder. So now we can run, for example, CS, and it will say, okay, we're currently using Corsair 2.0. As I told you, it recently came out. We can also list everything that was installed with Corsair. And as of right now, we have only one tool which is installed, which is CS. We can ask to update this particular tool, which is CS. There will be no update because we just installed it. We can also ask to update all the tools by just saying CS update without specifying anything. So we can do CS update. Currently, we have only one thing, and so and so it's going to do exactly the same thing now usually on my on my regular machines i have actually an alias for updating things you know i do something like you know something that, that, that we did before right? i do sudo update and you know sudo sudo apt you know full upgrade uh, minus y and i also put in you know sudo apt uh, auto remove minus y okay and recently i just also added you know cs update okay so this is the alias that i usually have and so i type in update enter my password it, it goes and does the whole update for me. And so I never have to worry about my, you know, my Scala environment, about all of my other tools and, uh, and things like this. All right. Now, uh, once it finishes, it should take just a couple of seconds and then it should finish this. We'll actually use uh, Corsair to install a bunch of Scala related tools. And you can actually specify many of them in one line. So we're just gonna do CS install and then we're gonna specify all of them, okay? It should finish just right now. All right, so we're gonna do CS install. We're gonna install Ammonite, we're gonna install Bloop, we're gonna install Corsair. Now, Corsair, th this one that I'm installing is actually the JVM-based one. I don't even know why you would need it these days, but I'm going to install it so that I can show you how to uninstall things. We're also going to install Jitterate. We're also going to install SBT. We're going to install Scala. We're going to install Scala FMT, and I'll probably uh, speed this up in post-production for you. All right, it finished, so we can do CS list, and we're gonna see that all of them are installed, and so now I can show you how to uninstall. Well, you just do it like this, okay? So now it's gone, CS list, okay? Notice that when we install Jitterate, we said CS install Jitterate, but when we uninstall, we actually need to say G8, okay? So now it's gone, and if I wanted to install it, I would say Jitterate. And notice that the installation of Jitterate now is much, much faster because it's cached, okay? So you just copied it over from, from the cache. The cache is actually over here, it's in your home folder. It's in um, uh, cache uh, course here. Why, why did I say course? Course here, it's over here. Okay, so if I go out and I do uh, this, then we should see that it's around 236 mags. Okay, and because it's cached, you know, we can actually remove it. Okay, and now if we say CS update, it will actually download everything for us again, and so it's all good. In fact, in this particular case, we might actually even save a couple of, uh, a couple of mags. There we go, let's check it out course here and as you can see it's a little bit smaller so we actually saved a little bit of space but you know we used up a little bit of network all right okay so let's go to my home folder let's do cs list and so we see everything that is that is installed but if we do some like m and i we're going to see that we actually don't have java well of course we don't have it it's a brand new vm so whatever we're going to start it's going to say hey we don't have java now luckily course you can actually install java for us we can actually go and do cs java 
available. And by the way, uh, for, for the Java installation, we can list the ones that are available, but for the regular applications, we cannot. However, I prepared some, some cool Linux hackery for you that uh, you will actually be able not only to list, but also to install uh, to install apps directly from that list. Now, um, this is a list, as you can see, it's a very, very large list. And there is this awesome application that I should probably make a video about. Uh, it's a fuzzy finder and it's called FZF. So if we go and do sort of app install FZF, then it is going to install it. But for some reason, even though I'm using Ubuntu 20.04, the version that it is that it installs is slightly out of date. It's 0.20. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do sudo apt remove FZF. Not that we need the latest version, uh, but but still. Now, a long time ago, I basically gave up on uh, package managers in general. There are way too many of them, and they're always like have stuff like out of date. And so. I started my maintaining my own uh, set of install hyphen repository. So if you go to install.devinsidey.com, it's going to redirect you to GitHub and it's going to search for my repositories that start with install hyphen. And I have a bunch of them and you can even search directly from the URL. You can do install.devinsidey.com slash FZF, for example, and you're going to find FZF. Okay, the way my install scripts are structured is that there is always the actual file and uh, you just copy these two lines. The first line downloads the file, the second line makes it executable and uh, actually runs it. So in this particular case, the installation for FZF just, I believe it just clones a repository into your home folder. Okay, that, that's all it does. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over here, we're gonna copy these two lines, we're gonna go back to my terminal, we're gonna paste them, we're gonna press enter, and then bam, it's just gonna clone it. And uh, also because we're not installing through the package manager, it actually runs its, you know, through its, through its proper install script. And so it asked me if I want to enable fuzzy auto completion. Sure, I keep bindings, sure. Uh, update my shell configuration files, sure. Because it did that, I'm actually gonna go out and I'm gonna go back in, switch to my home folder again, okay? Now, this is not a tutorial about fuzzy finder, but essentially anytime you have some sort of list like this, you can pipe it to FZF and then you can start searching for stuff. For example, let's say I'm searching for uh, local, right? So I'm just gonna type in local, okay? And then I can press enter and it will just give me this line back. Now, in this particular case, it wasn't particularly uh, useful. However, if we do CS Java available as we did before, and then I'm gonna pipe it to FZF, then we can start searching for something like GraalVM and we're gonna do a 20, okay? Now, in this particular case, and this is also another reason why I don't like package managers, is that because there is like this wall between the actual release and you, right? So uh, these package managers, they usually have some sort of index, and if the index is not updated for some reason, then you kind of have to wait. Now, I happen to know that a couple of months ago, uh, GraalVM uh, 20.20 uh, uh, came out. And actually, this is the one that I want. And so I want to wanna teach you how to actually add it to, to this particular list. Now, there are a couple of uh, JVM uh, installation helpers or whatever whatever you want to call them. Uh, one of them, for example, is SDK Man. Uh, another one is called Jabba, J-A-B-B-A. -B -B -A. And Corsair, at least as of right now, it actually uses this java index now usually this index is updated by its uh by its uh, continuous integration uh job however uh for some reason it wasn't updated i guess you know it's open source so the maintainer didn't have time and um, yeah it's not a big deal because in this particular case i know how to fix the situation so if we actually go over here i'm actually going to show this to you so this is the project this is java so you, you could use java manually to install jvms for you and it has this file index.json if we look at it it's a very very simple json file it, ha it says, you know, for Windows, for AMD64, we can install a JDK from uh, Zulu, you know, like this is like the vendor um, uh, vendor part of the name. These are the versions. This is how to how to find them and this is how to unpack them. OK, so if you were to search for uh, 20. 20.1.0. Uh, so this is the one for, for Windows. You know, we have the community edition, which is based on Java 11, community edition that is based on Java 8. And we also have the um, the one that does not specify the version, but it actually goes to Java 8 over here. Okay. So we sort of have like this one group, as you can see, we find like not found nine of them. These were the first three. They were they were for Windows. The other ones are for uh, for Linux, as you can see over here, it says Linux. And the other ones are for um, Mac. All right. Now, I happen to know that, you know, because Corsair is using Java and it just downloads this index. I just pressed Control C, by the way, to kill uh, to kill uh, FZF. It just downloads this index into the cache. So if you were to just go and open it with uh, Vim, so if you go to cache, uh, Corsair, V1, HTTP4S, we're going to go to github.com. Uh, so the maintainer is called Shuku, Java raw master and inside of it there is going to be index json okay and we're going to see that this is exactly exactly this file okay 
So now if we search for um, 20.1.0, okay, so this is the one for Windows, still Windows, still Windows. The next one is going to be for Linux. Okay, so this is this is the one for Java 11. I actually don't care about Java 11. This is the one for, for Java 8. Okay, so all I need to do is I need to copy this line. I need to go over here, find the one, replace it with two, find the one again, do the same trick, find the one again, do the same trick. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for... I'm going to search for uh, 20.1.0 again because I wanted to find uh, this one, the one which does not specify the version. I'm going to do the same trick. I'm just going to duplicate the line, going to go over here, find the one, replace with the two, find the one, do the same trick, find the one, do the same trick, exit from here, and we're done. So now if you're going to do CS job, well, I can actually go up available FCF. And now if I do Graal 20, then we're going to see that the 22.0 is actually there. Okay. So now if I actually go in, I say, um, I say CS Java and I do JVM. By the way, if you, if you just do this, it will install the Adopt OpenJDK, I believe. So, um, but you can also specify that you want the Graal VM. I prefer the Graal VM, so I'm just going to do Graal VM and it's going to grab the one in, per, in this particular case, 20.2.0. We could have been very specific with, with the version. We could have specified it ourselves. But in this particular case, I knew that the way I modified it, it just, it just went. So it defaulted to Java 8. It went to the Graal VM, which does not specify which Java version to take. And it just took the latest from there which happened to be 20.2.0 okay it's semantic versioning okay so as you can see it's around 300 max and it should finish in just a couple of seconds as you might know the way uh, java installations work is that you need to have the java home variable that would uh that would um um, delegate you to the to the bin folder. As of right now, it just it just launched uh, it just launched Java, and this is you know it just launched the Java command. This is this is what it does by by default. Okay, as you can see, the location is over there. Okay, now uh, finally enough because it, it as always like Corsair downloads stuff into the cache folder first, and then it actually moves it into the Corsair um, JVM. Okay, so if we go into um, into cache Corsair. Then we're going to see that like the major cache is like over there. So it downloaded GraalVM over there and then it copied it over into the JVM directory. Okay, so it's now over here, which means that if we go and if we do, uh, you know, CS Java and JVM, GraalVM again, the installation is going to be instantaneous because it's already in cache and it's already installed anyway. Okay, even if we if we were to, to uninstall it, uh, which we'll do by the end of the video, um, but by, by simply removing the folder and you would do like install again, it would just copy it over from the cache. So it's going to be very, very fast. If we do Java version as of right now, it's not gonna it's not gonna work. It says you know command Java not found, but can be installed with blah 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 because we simply don't have this Java home variable. Now uh, you can do it manually, but Corsair actually has your back as well. So if you do the same command, you know CS Java Graal VM, and you pass in this hyphen hyphen env, and it will actually show you what you need to export, right? So you could just copy these things, put it into your profile, it exports Java home, it adds it to your path, and everything would work out. However, Corsair can actually do this for you. So instead of hyphen hyphen env, you can actually do Happen, happen, set up, and so it, it just went and it changed, changed the dot profile. So if I go over there, this is this is what it did. It says JVM installed by Corsair, and it pasted pasted these two things in there. And the awesome thing to know about this is that it, it is is that it actually it can actually change it right because it knows how to find this stuff. So if you later if you want to switch from GraalVM to to OpenJDK, it will actually change the dot profile um, file for you. So it's not just gonna like append it; it's actually gonna change the stuff. In fact, I'm actually going to show this to you. So as of right now, if we do Java version, it's still not going to work because we need to we need to go out and go go back in. Okay, but if we do Java version now, we'll see that everything works out just fine. Also, Corsair has a command to list this, so we can do CS Java Home. We can also echo the variable Java Java Home. Okay, like this. Great. So now, if we were, to, for example, to do CS Java, I have, I have a JVM eight, which is the default one, right? And if we just do a setup, it will actually install the Adopt Open JDK. It will go to the dot profile and it will actually change these, these two lines and it will export it for us. So we will just need to log out, log back in, back in, and we will have the Adopt Open JDK. Now I'm going to go into profile again just to show you. As you can see, it literally just changed them, right? So it didn't just append stuff to the file. So if I go out, go back in, I do Java version, and then bam, we have the Adopt, uh, adopt Open JDK. Now I'm actually gonna go, um, you know, I, I can actually show you also like CS Java Home and, you know, Echo, Echo uh, Java, Java Home. But actually I'm gonna go back and uh, I'm gonna do CS, um, what was it? I just, I already forgot it. Uh, do, 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 Growl, Growl VM. Uh, GraalVM setup. Okay. Um, not like this, just like that. There we go. 
Gravium setup could not load. Um, I did something wrong. I needed to say half and half and JVM Gravium setup like this. So as you can see, it was already in cached. So it just changed my profile. And so if I if I just go out, go back in, and I say Java version, Java version, it's gonna say bam, I'm back to Gravium, which is really really awesome. Now let's play with some other tools because you know because now we have Java. So for example, we can launch the Scholar Apple, and it magically is just going to work out for us because we have you know. GraalVM, and uh, also if you want to change the version, you can actually we can actually do this quite simple, quite simply, right? So before we said CS install Scala, okay? Now it's in cache, it's already installed, so it's so it's not going to do anything anything weird. But you can actually go and luckily the version of the REPL is also the version of Scala, so you can just do two twelve, two twelve twelve like this. So now it's going to install it, and uh, we're going to have it. So if we do Scala now, then now all of a sudden we have the version for two twelve twelve. Okay, we can go back out. Why doesn't it go back out? There we go. CS install Scala again. Oops, I ended up in my uh, in my Windows. CS install Scala. How did how did this happen? That it uh, it was probably slow and I pressed Control D twice. Okay, so if we do CS install Scala, it was fast because it just copied it over from the cache folder. So if we do Scala, then you're gonna see that we're back to um, 2.13.3. Now, luckily if for some reason you have to do this all the time, then you can actually um, have this one installed right so if you do cs list you're going to see that you know um you, ha you can only have like one of them installed right but you don't have to install stuff so for example you could do simply cs launch instead of install you do launch and then you do the same thing you know 212 12 because it's already cached it's just going to launch it immediately right so you have the 212 12 How however if you go out right i have no idea why it takes forever to go out i just press ctrl d but it doesn't go out there we go why did it take take forever okay so now if i do scala you know the installed version is still the one for the, that uses 213.3 now ammonite is a much better REPL. how However, for Ammonite, the version of Ammonite doesn't actually match the Scala version. So, for example, if we start uh, start Ammonite, then we're going to see that the version is 2204, whatever, whatever. Okay. Um, however, if we do launch and we do Ammonite, 2.2.0 you know the first time it's going to have to download it it's going to download it but it's still going to uh, use the latest version of scala which is 2.13.3 and by the way you can also use um uh, ivy style uh, versioning so you can do latest.stable over here latest.stable happens to be 2.2.0 right and you can also do latest release and the latest release is, is this one, the experimental version. I'm not sure why the Ammonite version deviates from the standard Semver convention. By the way, a quick sidebar, Corsair hosts the descriptors of these applications uh, either on GitHub in JSON files or in JSON files in, inside of Java archives, which are published to published to Maven and stuff. I'm actually going to show you the one for, uh, for Ammonite right now which is over here. So it's in Corsair, but not in Corsair slash Corsair, it's in Corsair slash apps. And as you can see, like these are all the apps and this is a descriptor. It specifies the main class as we will see that th we're going to require this actually in just a couple of seconds. It specifies where it is. It's it's on Maven, Maven Central. And over here, as you can see, it uses the latest dot, um, dot release. And I have no idea why it actually uses latest release. This is why we're using this 2.2.0 version. We're not gonna play with these descriptors in this video. I'm not gonna show you how to publish your own apps. However, if you do want to publish your own apps i'm confident that uh course here is probably the best way to do it these days okay let's go back over here and let me show you how to launch the ammonite with the scala version 212 okay so uh in this particular case we actually need to use the the full path you know because like remember course it just fetches the the jars right it just fetches the artifacts so we actually need to need to fetch the artifact which was the full name you know the typical uh you know maven uh coordinates okay so we have howie uh and we have ammonite we need the one for 2.12 the latest one is 12. we can use the latest dot stable now if we do it like this it will actually not be able to launch it because all it does it just downloads the jar file however it doesn't know that it's like an executable thing uh you know it doesn't know that it has like a main class and stuff so it says cannot find default main class specify one was m or main class so we just need to go over here and we see, need to say M. In this particular case for Ammonite, it's in the package Ammonite and it's just called main. And then bam, it is going to launch Ammonite for, for Scala 212. Now, if this is something that uh, you're doing often, or maybe, you know, if you're doing something like this for for, for some uh, tool that is way more complicated, like a tool that requires, you know, many other flags, then you can actually uh, put this line basically in the script and Corsair can actually do this for you. So we're gonna go and we're gonna do like exactly the same thing. It just said, instead of launch, we're actually going to say bootstrap, 
Okay. Now, if we don't specify any anything anything else, it will actually create a tiny script and it's going to call it Bootstrap. However, we can go into the end and we can say, please output this into a file. Let's call it m m12. Okay. So now m12 is in my home directory. So if I actually move it, if I actually move it to uh, local share course here bin, okay, then it's going to be there. So now if I do m, it's going to launch the one that I have installed. But if I do m12, then it's going to launch ours. However, you need to be careful that, uh, you know, only because you put them in the same folder doesn't mean that if you do CS update, that it will actually update it. Now I just did CS update, so it's going to take a couple of seconds, but it's actually not going to, it's actually not going to uh, update this one, right? So it should, it should have like picked it up and updated it to, uh, to, the, to this version, okay? even though it's like Scala to 12, it should have updated it to this version, but it's not going to, right? And it should have updated it to, to this version because over here in the descriptor, it would always look for latest release and not, not latest stable, okay? So if you do M12, it is still going to stay at this at this version. The next thing that I'm going to show you is the resolve command. So you can look up the dependencies of your dependencies. So you can do a CS resolve and then you can do something like org type level and we can do column colon. Uh, it's a typical, you know, like, um, you know, stuff that Ammonite is using. And by the way, Ammonite is using Corsair behind the scenes. So this is actually where this thing originated. So let's just do latest dot stable. Now, first it's going to take a couple of seconds to, to download it. Okay. But uh, there it is. So I'm actually going to clear the screen, do it again. So now it's in cache. And so it shows us the dependencies. Okay. So Cats Effect has a dependency on uh, Cats, uh, Cats Core, Cats Kernel, and also on the, on, on the Scala library. Now you can uh, pass in a couple of flags. For example, you can do hyphen T like this. In fact, let me actually clear the screen. Let me do this. As you can see, it uh, shows it to you as as a tree. You know what has a dependency on on what. I'm not sure why it does this. Uh, that there is a possible incompatibility. Uh, so if you actually go and specify the version yourself, like 2.2.0, then it's actually going to look fine. Maybe I should always clear the screen like this. Okay. I'm not sure why it shows the possible incompatibility like this, but not but not like that. In any case, if you go and actually replace the T with what. I'm sorry, what depends depends on, then you can sort of like filter this this tree a little bit. So for example, you can ask what depends on org type level, colon, colon, cat score without the version. Okay, just like this. And you will see a, a, a smaller a, a smaller part of the tree. Another cool thing that you can do is you can actually fetch these artifacts. Now, anytime we do, you know, install or launch or bootstrap, obviously download stuff, right? But there's also a command that, you know, that would just download stuff. So for example, the command would be CS fetch. Right. So I'm actually going to go like this and I'm going to say, uh, okay, over here, instead of resolve, I'm just going to do fetch. Uh, I actually don't need any of that. So we're just going to do this. And uh, I'm actually not sure why it, why it fetched stuff. Oh, so I guess it didn't fetch stuff for resolve. Okay, but now it actually did fetch them. I'm going to do this. In fact, I'm going to do that so that my terminal becomes a little bit smaller like uh, this. There we go. So it fetched them and it put them over there. What you can also do is you can specify a class pass command and it will just render them in such a way that you can actually copy paste them and put them on the path. So as you can see, it just puts them all in one line and puts uh, colons over here. In fact, I'm going to show you some, some really cool thing. Uh, let's actually make a directory inside of dev and we're going to call it hacking time hacking time okay so now we're going to go in there dev hacking time we're going to go and we're going to create a file main.scala and we're going to create an object main i'm going to say extends app and we're going to say print line hello world okay we're going to close it uh, I'm going to go back to normal mode and go back out. Now, if we have this thing, if we actually go and um, now a funny thing, if we actually do Scala, Scala main, it will actually compile it on the fly and it will actually run it. But I'm not going to show this to you because I want to show you how you can, for example, launch a Scala C compiler that we don't even have installed, right? But we're using Corsair to just launch it. And we can pass it as a parameter. Uh, we can pass it main.scala. Okay, so it's downloading the Scala compiler now and then it passes in main.scala as a parameter. And now if we go and look, it actually compiled the files, right? And so now if we do Scala main, it will work. However, if we do Java main, that it's not going to work because why? why? Because the standard library is not on the class path. So now we can use Corsair to put it on the class path. And the way we do this is by doing Java CP. And so, so before we did just Java main, so now we just need to do hyphen CP for class path. And the way class path works is that you should never forget to put the current folder on the class path. So this is going to be the current folder. Then we're going to have column. And then we're going to have whatever is going to come back from this command. This command is going to be please fetch the standard library or org scala lang lang colon scala library latest dot 
stable. Now, usually you would want to do a class path over here, but in this particular case, it's just one library, so we actually don't need this. So if I'm going to do this, then bam, it fetches Scala library, and it managed to uh, to actually launch the um, the main method, which is great. Awesome. Now, the only thing that is left to show you, well, except for my secret sauce that I promised you, is the actual setup command. Now, the CS setup command is actually doing like many of these things that we did manually, it does them automatically for you. So if I just do CS setup right now, it will actually see that we actually have a JVM installed, right? It says found a JVM installed under Corsair Graal VM. Uh, it checked that the Corsair bin is on the path, and it is. And now it installs a couple of things, right? So it figured out that we already installed a couple of things. It actually installed Corsair, which we don't need. It actually installed the Scala compiler now, which again, we, we, we don't really need. Okay, now if we actually go and if we remove the, uh, you know, my cache folder course here, but just the JVM, okay, then we're going to do CS setup again, and it will think that we have a JVM, right, but we actually don't, right, so if we launch Ammonite or something, it, we, we, we actually don't, okay, so let's actually go and fix this real quick, so let's do a JVM, crawl VM like this so now unfortunately it uh well actually I, I was about to say unfortunately it has to download it now but it doesn't because remember it actually uh, uh downloads everything into cache corsair slash v1 so it just we just copied it from my cache folder in into there okay so now if i do mnite it should work just fine because our profile is, is fine okay however if we were to go and actually change my profile right so if we just go and um okay what did it do so i'm just gonna delete these guys right so let's get out of here go out go back in okay so now if i do cs setup it will say that we actually don't have a jvm and so do you want to install one please yes yes please do and so now it goes to adopt open gdk which is actually just copied it from my cache it asked me do you want to update the profile i say well yes of course and so it does that and then it figures out that it actually installed all, all the other things and so we don't need to install them okay so again if we look into my profile it did exactly that it just put the stuff in which means that if i go go out go back in Go into my holder. If I do Java version, we're going to see that everything works out just fine. By the way, I kind of forgot to show you that there is also Java um, installed command, and it will show you that you actually have the Graal VM and adopt uh, OpenJDK. Okay. Now, there's also a way to pass uh, flags to the setup command. In fact, uh, remember my install repository is over here. So if we go to uh, install dev inside of colon, we search for Scala, then we're going to find a couple of them. And one of them is called Scala ENV that I created just a couple of days ago. Okay, it works the same, you know, you download the script, make it executable, run it. The first thing that my scripts are always doing is they're, they're removing themselves because they're in memory, so there is no need to keep them. Okay, it installs Corsair, it makes it executable, it runs a setup command and it passes a couple of flags. It says, say yes to all the questions, please prefer the Graal VM and install this particular list of the apps. Okay, and um, then please remove this this launcher. Okay, and it also reminds you that you shouldn't forget to restart your terminal. Okay, in fact, this is one of the one of the things that I'm gonna that I'm gonna uh, show you in this video that I'm gonna record. You know, that I'm gonna release in parallel to this one. It's gonna be a very short video that is basically going to run just this. In fact, we could even do it right now. So if I copy these guys and I go back here and I paste it and I press enter. And it shouldn't do actually anything, right? So it download, downloads this launcher that we actually don't really need. Then it does like CS install setup, but you know, uh, I'm sorry, CS setup, but we already have everything. So, uh, you know, there's there's no need to do anything. We still have, we still have Grawl and uh, and it's all good. All right, now the time has come for some secret sauce. And for, for the secret sauce, we're going to need FZF, which we already have installed. And we're also going to need um, unzip, uh, unzip. Okay, so uh, I am uh, synchronizing my dot .files uh, over um, ac across all of my computers and I have it on GitHub. So over here, and the link is going to be down in the description, this is my ZSHRC, and it has the Corsair section. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy these three functions that I wrote for Corsair, and we're gonna go through them in just a couple of minutes. So I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna go into, uh, the best RC is probably the good place to, to put them into. So I'm gonna go to the bottom and I'm just gonna open a new line um, like this. And because I'm using WSL and I don't have anything uh, fancy uh, set up, I cannot actually use the normal mode to paste stuff. Uh, so I need to use the uh, the regular mode, which is why it's going to be pasted like, like this. Okay, but whatever. It's going to work out just fine. Uh, let's go back out. Let's go back in and go into my uh, current folder. Okay. Now, um, we have these three functions. Uh, the first one is FCSI. So what it does is it 
it, it runs the course install command and it pipes it through FZF. Now, I, I told you in the beginning of the video that there is no way to list all of the things that are available through course here. And by the way, you can also add your own channels, you know, publish your own apps, uh, which we're not going to do today. So what, what this does is it basically it runs the course here um, uh, inst install command and it passes in uh, whatever is available and pipes it through FZF. So you, you're just going to see it like this. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, press enter. Now the output is, is a bit weird. So I'm going to do control C because it had to download some stuff, some stuff the first time. But the next time you're going to run, you're just going to do FCSI. It shows you everything that is available. You can start typing something like mill, for example. It found it. You press enter. It actually goes and installs it, right? So it's course here installed, which is piped through FZF. And we're going to go through the script uh, in just a second. I'm going to show you exactly how, how it does it. Okay, now another thing that I have is is a very similar command, but there is also a J over here for, for Java. Okay, so it basically does the same thing for Java. So for example, again, we could go to, I don't know, GraalVM uh, 20, uh, 22, for example, this one. I'm going to press enter and it will actually go and, and install it. In this particular case, it was installed, so it just goes and says, you know, whatever, go to your profile. Okay, and uh, the last one that I have is FCSRT. Okay, so again, it's FZF and Corsair, so all of them are FCS. Okay, and RT is for resolve as a tree. Okay, so I'm going to do org.type level uh, cats effect uh, latest dot stable okay and as you can see it will just pipe it through fzf so for example you could just type in something like okay i don't care about the standard library i just want to see cats so you just type in cats and it just filters out this list it's not super useful for for something as small as this maybe we should actually grab something else so for example we can grab um i don't know com type safe aka aka and we're gonna grab something more complicated maybe like aka cassandra uh, aka persistence persistence cassandra Yes, yes, and draw like this. And we're going to grab the latest dot stable. Now it's going to take some time to actually fetch it, and which is why it's going to ruin the output a little bit. So uh, once it finishes, I'm actually going to press Control C. Okay, I believe it finished. Control C, Control L, and actually let's run it. And as you can see, like this tree is much bigger, right? And so now you can start typing some like, okay, I only care about Akka, or um, I only care about, uh, I don't know, Jackson. Okay, so it's, it's it's actually much more useful. Okay, so let's go back back to my GitHub and I actually show you how um, I'm going to show you how this works. Now the, the the last one that we did is this FCSRT. Uh, this is the 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 simplest one to explain, right? It basically just uh, does CS resolve as a tree, whatever you pass in as a parameter, it pipes it into FZF. It makes sure that the list is reversed and it makes sure that it maintains the ANSI codes for the colors. Okay, FCSJI very similar. You know, it does the CS Java JVM and it passes you know, it, it does the setup in the end and it passes in as a parameter, whatever comes back from this command. And this command takes the Java available and pipes it through FZF. Okay. The regular install command is similar, but it's, you know, it's a bit more involved because it actually needs to download two jars. The first one is this one, uh, IO get Corsair apps. And the other one is IO get Corsair apps uh, contrib, right? So this is from, from the apps that are not officially supported by Corsair, but they're supported by, by people who contributed stuff. So you run CS install with the contributor flag, right? And then, and then you, you, um, you cat into uh, the whatever comes back from the CSL function, which is this one, it's, you know, course, your list function that I wrote, and I'm going to explain it to you in just a couple of seconds. Okay, maybe we can actually do this. It asked basically to list the stuff that is in this jar and to list the stuff that is in this jar. It puts them all together in one big list. It pipes them into a sort in reverse order, and then it pipes them into FZF. Okay, so it does CS install this thing. Okay, now CSL is a bit more complicated. It, it basically downloads these jars, it unzips them, and it grabs for JSON because remember they're all in uh, in JSON files, as you can see over here. And uh, where is it? Where were we? Okay, and and it does some uh, SED uh, stuff to basically to filter out a bunch of stuff so that so that the only thing that is left is actually the names of the files. Okay, so maybe we can actually run it again. So if we just do FCSI, then you're gonna see like. It, it, this SED command makes sure that the only thing that is left is this. Okay, as you can see, as of right now, uh, so I'm recording this video in uh, in the in the middle of October, more like the beginning of October. And as you can see, as of right now, you can install 66 apps. However, there are probably also other channels out there, and you can add your own channels. It's basically like a regular package manager. And yeah, that's pretty much it. As I already mentioned, I'm gonna be releasing a video in parallel. It's gonna be a very short video where we're just gonna run the CS setup command and basically wanna you know show people who are, uh, who are 
we're like relatively new to Scala, I want to make a very short video that they can just run CS setup and everything will be installed. Okay, so unless you came from there, you might want to check it out. And apart from that, that's pretty much all I have for you today. As always, it's been Vlad, devinsideyou.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you learned something today, consider supporting me on Patreon or on GitHub sponsors, whatever you prefer. And as watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.